Well, good morning, saints of the second, family and friends. Can we give God a hand praise on today? For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are so happy and delighted that you are here on to morning, for we have prayed to God for a man of God after his own heart, and God has blessed us with that man. And so we at the tip of anticipation, like a child before Christmas, that God has blessed us to be a blessing to you. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for what he has done in our life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, streaming audience, for joining us on today. For we are getting ready to move into another spiritual dimension. For God is getting ready to do something special in our lives. Tell your neighbor, get ready, get ready, get ready. I don't know what you came here to do, but we came here to praise God. For he is wonderful. He is marvelous. He is magnificent. I've never seen anything better than him. He is better than Campbell's soup. He is mm, good. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for how he's blessing you. He's brought us a mighty long way, y'all. He's brought us from a mighty long way. Just think about this morning. He touched you. You got up with a reasonable portion of health and strength. Eyes to see. Some of us were able to walk in here this morning. We had a little something, something to eat. And now it's time for us to get our praise on. Are you ready? Don't tell me the story. Are you ready? Let me hear you clap your hands. And let me hear you say glory. 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 Glory to his name. Good morning. God is a good God. As we come today and celebrate and praise God for answering our prayers and sending us our senior pastor, Dr. Maurice Watson, and our first lady, Sister Watson, we want to be reminded we did not make this journey on our own. It is only because of God's grace and mercy that you and I and Second Baptist and all of those that are here with us are still here. So in line with that for our devotional scripture this morning, will be taken from Psalms 116, verses 1, 2, 5, and 6 from the King James Version. Here David expresses his reliance and thankfulness for God's grace and mercy. So join with me as I read for you Psalm 116, starting with verse 1. I love the Lord because he had heard my voice and my supplications because he hath inclined his ear unto me therefore will I call upon him as long as I live gracious is the Lord and righteous yea the Lord God is merciful the Lord preserveth the simple I was brought low and he helped me the Mississippi Mass Choir and the lyrics of their song, Your Grace and Mercy, states what I just read for you in contemporary language. It says, Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and your mercy brought me through. So as we go together in prayer, and then into our worship service, I want us all to pause for a moment and think about and then praise God this morning for his endless grace and mercy toward us that has brought us all this far. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, in Luke chapter 11, Jesus' disciples asked him, 
Lord, teach us how to pray. And you mentioned hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name is, is lifting you up and exalting you, Heavenly Father. It means that we separate your name and we praise you only. We don't praise any idols, any worshiping figures. God, we praise you. Father God, we ask for your provision today to conquer any division that we may have so that we may formulate a coalition for the battlefield to serve for you. Father God, we are excited today that we have a new yeah. under-shepherd. Gracious Father, would you work through him? Give him everything that he needs. But Father God, this morning, I want to convict our hearts to let everybody know that, Father God, it is not all on Dr. Watson. We must all participate in the process. So, Father God, give us all what we need today. Father, let us be an example to the community that your light may shine through us, Heavenly Father. Let us continue to be that beacon. And let us go to the throne boldly because we have a relationship with you. Father, we just don't come in these four walls on Sunday. It is a daily walk with you, Heavenly Father. We have to get down on our knees and ask you for what we want if it's your will. So, Father, it is a new beginning for us today. So, Father, we ask for your guidance. We ask for you to order our steps. And we ask that, God, you give us everything that we need to do it in love. Because your grace and your mercy is sufficient so heavenly father let us see praise today like we've never seen it before god use us use the choir use all our different ministrations god to do what you called us to do it is in the wonderful name of jesus that we pray this morning father we thank you that we don't have to go into the closet to pray to the priest that we can go directly to you so we thank you god for what you're doing because you are the same yesterday today and tomorrow we love you father it is in jesus name that we pray amen come on somebody praise the lord in this place for this is the day the lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it if he's made a way for you would you just make some noise in this room
mountains. Is that anybody testimony? You cause walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made you. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. Everybody say, you move mountains. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. Come on, you made. Yes, you did. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. That's the miracle. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Said I don't know how, but you did it. Say, but my grandmother Derek would say it this way Have you any river that seems uncrossable? Have you any mountain that you? You know it. God, He specializes. He specializes in things impossible, and He will do. No matter what the situation is, no matter what the problem is, He will do. With no other power, Holy Ghost power can do. Hallelujah. This 
is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Greetings, Second Baptist family, friends, and streaming audience. We are so delighted you have chosen to worship with us. At this time, we extend a warm welcome to each of you. On behalf of our elders, deacons, staff pastors, and Second Baptist Church family, we welcome you to praise, worship, and honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To learn who we are, how we serve, or so into this ministry, visit www.thesecond.com. Have a blessed day. joining us. I am Andrea Lewis and here are our announcements. Saints, join us for Bible study every Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the Worship Center. We will be taking a spiritual journey through the book of Psalms. Again, that's every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Attention Second Baptist, our biannual church business meeting will take place on October 4th at 6 p.m. in the Worship Center. Please make plans to attend. If you are looking to get involved in ministry, we have the perfect ministry for you. The media ministry is seeking individuals who would like to serve as our photographer, camera operator, back room operator, or lighting operator. If this is you, come and join our team as we continue to spread the gospel through technology. For more information, contact Pastor Ricky at rcalhoun at thesecond.com or Sister Delois Macon at macon at thesecond.com. Second Baptist Church would like to announce the Keith Norfleet Scholarship given by Sister Flossie Lee. The scholarship is in honor of Keith Norfleet, the son of Sister Lee. This scholarship was established after Keith was an innocent victim who lost his life on Easter morning in 1997. He was a student at UAPB. This scholarship is to help any young person that needs assistance with going to college. We will forever want Keith's name to live on. For more information on how to apply for this scholarship, please contact Pastor Ricky at rcalhoun at thesecond.com. Greetings, Second Baptist members and guests. It's that time again to register and volunteer with the Literacy and the Word Ministry. Law is partnering with Our Kids Read by reading 30 minutes with a child to improve their reading skills. Registration and training will be held September 27th in the Family Life Center at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Lunch will be served. Please let us know if you will be there for a head count. We are asking for your participation to give back to our children in the public school system. For any questions, please contact Pastor Ricky. Next Gen Middle and High School students, join us October 15th at 10 a.m. as we will host ACT Prep Workshop. This workshop will be administered by the University of Arkansas of Fayetteville Center for Multicultural and Diversity Education. For more information on how to get signed up, please contact Pastor Ricky at rcalhoun at thesecond.com. Hello, Second Baptist. I'm Jacobia Bates, Director of Security. If you're looking to get into ministry, we would love to have you. We are seeking parking lot attendants to work on Sundays and Wednesdays. If this is you, come be a part of our team. You may sign up by going to the poster that will be in the lobby and scan the QR code. The QR code will take you to a form to fill out and complete or you may email me at security at the second.com. Remember, we need you. SBC, we are excited about the first Sunday in October, the relaunch of children's ministry. Yes, the relaunch of children's ministry. We have a few guidelines that we want to share with you. Can the church say guidelines? Yes, guidelines. Starting on the first Sunday of October, children's ministry will operate every Sunday at 10 a.m. We do have a cutoff time at 1020 a.m. So please come early, get your child checked in so they can have a great time in children's church. If you will be utilizing the nursery, you have the option to drop off on the south side of the building, drop your child off, and then come back after service and pick them up. If you are a child that will be from K through fifth grade, you can continue to come through the foyer, get signed in, and our volunteers will take you over. Listen, we are so excited about relaunching our children's ministry. If you have any questions, please contact myself or any Next GM volunteer. We will see you the first Sunday in October. For more information on events, weekly meetings, dates, and times, visit our website and govern yourselves accordingly. These are your announcements from the second. Have a blessed day. 
All right, good morning again, Second Baptist. Are you still with us? Amen, amen, amen. Certainly, we just want to remind you that we still have in-person Sunday school at 8.30 a.m. over in the chapel. So we'll be looking for you there as well. And of course, our church business meeting on October the 4th, and then the relaunch of our children's church on October the 2nd, along with next gen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, also, we have in our audience with us today, Andrea Lewis. Will you stand, please? Oh, there she is, there she is. Yeah, she's running for city director, Ward 6. And now Pastor Ricky is going to come for our altar prayer. Amen. Well, it's prayer time, church. And I believe it's a good time to pray. God has shown his hand. And this morning, let us be thankful for where he's brought us from and where he's about to take us to. So as we all stand, Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now just saying thank you, God. Thank you, God, for being so awesome, God, and so great, God. God, before we ask for anything, I ask that you would forgive us of our sins, those sins that's knowingly and unknowingly, God. Thank you for being so faithful and just to throw our sins in the sea of forgiveness and never to be brought up again. God, right now, we give you all the honor and all the praise on this morning, God. God, we thank you for continuing to have your hand upon Second Baptist, God. God, now I pray that you would just rain down your choice blessings upon this church, God. I pray that we will draw from the north, the south, the east, and the west, God. God, we thank you for the man of God that you have sent, God. We ask that you would make him a fresh God from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, God. And now, God, I ask that you just continue to watch over our schools, God. Continue to watch over our community, God. Be with our church family, God. Be with the sick and the shut-in right now, God. God, we are excited about what you have for us in this season, God. God, we continue to give you all the praise for what you're about to do, God. So, God, we thank you and we love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, this indeed is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord? The psalmist says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Has God been good to anybody in here today? Well, you ought to give God your praise and worship today because only God and God alone deserves to be praised. Amen. Amen. It's another day's journey. I don't know about you, friends, but I'm glad about it. Could have been dead and sleeping in my grave, but the Lord allowed our golden moments to roll on a little while longer. And we ought to thank the Lord for it. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning, Second Baptist. I am so delighted and happy uh, to be here. You may be seated to be here this morning. And to start with you sharing in the word of God today as your pastor. Amen. God has brought us together as only God can do. And we thank the Lord for it. I'm excited uh, to, 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 be, to begin today to share the word of God with you. Now I'm going to preach today and then we're going to start next Sunday right into a series. I want to do a series, a preacher series on finding God's purpose for your life. Finding God's. How many of you know that God has a purpose, a plan, a destiny for you? And that God wants you and he wants me to discover his purpose. He's not trying to hide his purpose. He wants us to know what that purpose is so that we can live life to the fullest. And so I want to encourage you to come bring your Bibles every Sunday. 
because I preach from the word of God. Amen. Amen. Right from the word of God. If you want to have a Bible like mine, I encourage you to get a new King James version. New King James. New, new just means it takes out the thee and thou's and wherewith and, and uh, 1611 Elizabethan language that we don't use today and makes it a little more simple. But if you want to use the old King James, that's fine. As long as it says B-I-B-L-E, that, that, that's the book for me. You want to use it. New International, ESV, whatever you want to use. But if you want to read along with me, I encourage you to get you a new uh, King James Version of the Bible as I'm going to be preaching every Sunday and not just, not just hooping and hollering. I mean teaching. Teaching the Word of God. Teaching the Word of God. Amen. Because my interest is not growing fans. I'm not trying to, to, to create a Maurice Watson fan, fan club. I want to help you to grow and be the Christian, the person, the wife, the husband, the single person, the youth, the child, the older person that God wants you to be. And that means we've got to sit down and be taught the word of God. Amen. So I hope, I hope and pray that, uh, that that's the kind of preaching and teaching that you want because that's all I'm giving you. Amen. I'm too old for all of that playing around. Amen. Amen. People, people need to hear a word from the Lord today. We, we are grateful today to have with us our mayor, Mayor Frank Scott. Stand up, Mayor. Mayor Frank Scott. Now, of course, as a 501c3, we cannot endorse candidates. I can't tell you who to vote for. But can I be frank with you? <laughs> I'm just being frank about it. Yeah. What do they call them? How does it? Frankfur Frankfurters or what do you call them? I'm just, you know, frankly speaking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we happen to have uh, Reverend Mayor. Amen. Frank Scott with us today. Make sure you go to the polls and you vote. Go to the polls and vote. This is an important, all elections are important. People have died so we can have this privilege. And so go to the polls and vote. And, you know, frankly speaking, you should just do it. <laughs> uh, do we have Sheriff Eric H Higgins with us today? Where are you, Sheriff? We're happy to have Pulaski County Sheriff Eric Higgins with us today. Welcome to Second Baptist, sir. And all of our uh, p p politicians and all of you who are running for office, we simply say make sure you go to the polls and you vote. Amen. But frankly speaking, we certainly should make sure we don't miss out uh, on this, this election. Well, I've stood up today because this is the first time I'm asking you, asking us to give an offering to the Lord. Let's prepare our hearts to give our tithes and our offerings today. Amen. How is the church supposed to be supported? Not through selling chicken dinners, but through tithes and offerings. Will a man rob God? He says, yet you have robbed me. How will we rob you in tithes and offerings? Today, friends, let us uh, give our tithe and over and above the tithe, let, let us give freely and lovingly and cheerfully um, to the support of God's church and God's kingdom. Amen. And so I'm excited and I hope this is a good offering today to just express to the Lord how thankful and grateful you are, amen, to be a part of Second Baptist Church and a part of God's kingdom. Uh, uh, do, uh, do we have uh, envelopes? Have they given you envelopes for giving? Everybody got what you need, amen. Those of you who are watching online, watching online, we encourage you to be a part of this, to participate in this a moment of worship as we prepare to give to the Lord 
our, our tithes and offering. Now, I guess we need to stand and uh, recite uh, something. <laughs> All right. All right. Let us pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we praise you and we adore you for the privilege we have today of giving back to you out of that which you have so lovingly and graciously given to us. Now, Father, I pray that you'd bless both gift and giver today uh, that to the end, Lord God, that you might be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's recite our uh, confession together as an act of faith, love, gratitude, and a heart for the house. We bring our tithes and offerings from our house and release it into yours. Because I'm a tither and consistent giver, the devourer is rebuked over my life. As I give today, I'm believing that according to your word, grace abounds in every area of my life. Health and healing, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, bills paid off, gifts and surprises, and unexpected blessings are coming my way. Thank you, God, for watching over your word to perform it in, in my life, my family, and with my money. You have blessed to be a blessing, amen, and have more than enough to give so that your vision and purpose for this house can be fulfilled, amen, amen. Come on, give the Lord praise today as we prepare to give this morning. How do we do this, Remlund? Follow the urshers. Follow the urshers from the back. Amen. Amen. Come on, choir.
attention today, we have another a political leader here with us, Sister Doris Wright. Where are you, Sister Wright? Would you please stand? Amen. Always happy to have you as well. Didn't mean to overlook anybody. Amen. God bless you.
Thank you, choir, for allowing the Lord to use you in such a mighty way today. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Psalm 66. Psalm 66. That old Jimmy Walker out there. I see you, Jimmy. It's good to see you today. Psalm 66. Why don't you look with me at verses 10 through 16. Psalm 66. Verses 10 through 16. And I'm reading from the New King James Bible. If you found this passage, might you indicate as such by saying amen. Here's how my Bible reads. For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to rich fulfillment. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt sacrifices of fat animals with the sweet aroma of rams. I will offer bulls and with goats. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. Look at the middle of verse 12. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to rich fulfillment. I want to talk about the other side of through. You may be seated. The other side of through. Many of you have probably seen one of Morgan Freeman's best movies that came out in 1994. The movie is called The Shawshank Redemption. In the movie, a young vice president of a Portland, Maine bank, Andy Dufresne, was wrongfully convicted of murdering his wife and her lover. He was sentenced to a life term at Shawshank State Prison. While in prison, he met another prisoner named Red, who was also serving a life's term. Red had picked Andy out as to be the new recruit who would be the first to crack under the pressures of prison life. Indeed, prison life was hard for Andy. He would experience uh, frequent beatings and all of the ugliness of incarceration, but Andy didn't crack because he knew that he was innocent. And he never gave up the hope that one day he would be free again. And one day Andy inadvertently discovered a weakness in the wall of his prison cell, and he began to plan his escape patiently and methodically. Andy plotted every minute detail of his prison break. After 19 years of incarceration, Andy crawled through a 500-yard sewage pipe to freedom. When he exited the pipe, he fell into a river that had been overflowed because of the heavy rain. He raised his hands to the sky and allowed the rain to wash the filthy sewage off of his body. Andy Dufresne crawled through a river of sewage and came out clean on the other side. In a very real sense, Andy's story is an appropriate metaphor for the power of perseverance and determination. His story suggests that there is life and freedom on the other side of a bad situation. His story reminds us that for every dark side of life, there's a bright side on the other side of it. But Andy's story, I believe, speaks in a very real way to someone, to what somebody in this room is dealing with today. Like Andy, things have happened to you over which you had no control. 
Like Andy, life hasn't been fair to you and you've had to suffer through embarrassment and humiliation. Like Andy, you've had to endure hardship for a long time and you wonder time and again, when will my nightmare be over? And like Andy, brothers and sisters, your path to deliverance meant that you had to crawl through some situations that were messy and nasty. But the Lord has sent me to share with you today that I've got some good news hot of heaven's press and it's just for you. And the good news is that you are going through whatever you are dealing with. Now that ought to be a word of encouragement because through means there's an exit. Through means it won't last forever. Through means there's a bright side somewhere. It is suggested that the mythical character Uncle Jakes was walking down the street one day whistling and singing to himself. Somebody said, Uncle Jakes, what are you singing? He said, I'm singing my five favorite words. What are your five favorite words, Uncle Jakes? And it came to pass. Why are those your five favorite words, Uncle Jakes? Because I didn't say, and it came to stay. I just want to remind you today that whatever you are dealing with right now, it won't last forever. The saying is true, this too will pass. So the question that I want to raise today is simply this. Do you believe that God can get you to the other side of what you're going through? Can I answer that question for you? Yes, you can. If you have faith in the power and faithfulness of God. The ancient writer of Psalm 66 understood what it means to get to the other side of through. The people of Israel, friends, had apparently faced a severe crisis that threatened their very survival, but God delivered them. Central to the development of this psalm is the idea of thankfulness because of God's deliverance that God had brought his people through a terrible ordeal. Now, we, now, we're not sure who wrote Psalm 66, nor are we certain of the precise occasion that prompted his writing. Some believe that this psalm is an exilic psalm that was, uh, uh, that, that, that was born out of the time when God delivered Israel from Babylonian captivity. Now, if that be true, the psalmist is simply expressing his thanksgiving for, for bringing a nation back to life that once looked like dead, dry, lifeless bones before they were repatriated to their homeland. Others believe, know that this psalm, if you will, speaks of the deliverance of the city of Jerusalem from Assyrian captivity in 701 BC when Sennacherib and his Assyrian army had surrounded the city. Sennacherib demanded that the citizens of Jerusalem surrender, but it was the prophet Isaiah who told King Hezekiah not to capitulate because God was going to deliver them. And one night, God sent one angel and that one angel killed 185,000 Assyrians and the next morning the ground was littered with the dead corpses of Assyrian soldiers. If that is the occasion that prompted this writing, then this psalm expresses the psalmist's national joy and, and personal joy because a nation that was facing certain death and destruction was it, it was was delivered instead in other words what could have and what should have wiped them out didn't wipe them out because god brought them to the other side of through in our text today friends the psalmist is simply looking back through the rearview mirror of his mind at all that the trouble that his nation had gone through but he looks at this trouble, watch this, not as trouble that came to them from the devil. No, he indicates that this was trouble that was initiated by God. He uses six second person singular statements to express the fact that God brought them through a terrible ordeal and five of the six statements seem to suggest that God was working against his own people. Look at your Bible, verse 10. Look at what he says. He says, for you, O God, 
have tested us. You, not the devil. You have tested us. You put us through this test. You allowed us to face this trial in our lives. You allowed us to be tested. You did this. But wait. Then he says, you have refined us as silver is refined. He speaks metaphorically of silver being refined in a furnace in order to be purified. But in ancient times, it is suggested that it took sil silver took a prolonged process in the furnace, more time than gold, if you will, in order to purify it. He said, Lord, you allowed us to go through the furnace of our affliction and we stayed in it longer than we wanted to stay. But wait a minute, he's not through. He says, you, you laid affliction on our backs. That word affliction means burdens. That is, you caused us to be crushed under the heavy weight of our burdens. You cause men to ride over our heads. In ancient times, when a king conquered his enemies, he would ride his chariot over the bodies of his dead and wounded enemies. It was his way of saying that you are totally and absolutely defeated and humiliated. He said, God, you allow our enemies to ride roughshod over us, to treat us in the worst possible way and then he sums it up he says we went through fire and we went through water two extremes fire and water in order to, ex to express that you allowed us to face troubles of every kind oh brothers and sisters notice notice that in each case in each case the psalmist does not accuse the devil of bringing this trouble no he says God you did this to us you know, sometimes we rebuke the devil. I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you for everything. My t something my toe. I rebuke your devil. But can I tell you something? Sometimes the trouble you face may not be from the devil. It might be from God. That some of us are rebuking, uh, the, 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 be rebuking God thinking we're rebuking the devil. He says, Lord, you brought this on me, on us. Are you with me here today? Oh, remember this, whatever happens in the life of a child of God is either God sent or God allowed. And if God sends it or if God allows it, he has a divine purpose for it. The psalmist said, Lord, Lord, you caused us to go through so much suffering that I thought it was over for us. But to make matters worse than that, God, I thought that you had turned your back against us. But just when it seemed like the people of God were doomed, the psalmist then acknowledges the fact that God stepped in just in the nick of time. The middle of verse 12, the first word of that middle verse of verse 12 is the, is the word that gives hope to this text. It says, but... You brought us to rich fulfillment. Rich fulfillment means abundance, increase, liberty, and overflow. Notice, notice that the same God that brought them to the trouble is the same God that brought them through the trouble. Which says that God never brings you to something that he doesn't have the power to bring you through. Do I have a witness here? Everything I say to you changed on that conjunction, but but is a contrasting conjunction. That means what I'm about to say is in direct is, is in direct contrast to what I previously said. The inference of that word but suggests that that what they went through should have wiped them out and could have wiped them out, but God stepped in and delivered them. Look at how bad things looked for Israel on the left side of that conjunction, but. And then look at how things changed on the right side of but. On the left side of but, he says we were tested. On the left side of but, he says we were being refined in the fire. On the left side of but, we had heavy burdens laid on our backs. On the left side of but, men were riding roughshod over us. On the left side of but, we went through the fire and the water of all kinds of trials. But thank God, he said, but God, you didn't 
didn't leave us on the left side of butt, but you pulled us to the right side of butt where there is deliverance and fulfillment. Am I talking to somebody this morning? If the truth were told, you are stuck on the left side of butt. Oh, you're stuck because you've given up on life. You're stuck because you don't feel you have any hope. You're stuck because you've given up and feel like there's no way for you to get through it. Stuck on the left side of the butt. You've given up, given in to your sickness and you stop fighting for your health. Stuck on the left side of the butt. You've stopped fighting for your marriage. Stuck on the left side of the butt. You're about to give up on your child because they keep cutting up in school and frustrating you. Stuck on the left side of butt. You're ready to quit a job because you're tired of working around cutthroat, undermining folk. Stuck on the left side of butt. You've given up hope that your life can ever get any better. You're stuck on the left side of butt. But the Lord sent me to preach this word today to pull you from the left side of butt to the right side of butt where you can deliver, where you can see God's deliverance in your life. Ah, there it is. There it is. Beginning at verse 13, the psalm takes an abrupt turn. So abrupt is the turn. There's a turn that it almost appears like it's the beginning of a whole different psalm altogether. Notice, notice that he shifts from second person. This is what you did to us. To first person singular. This is what I am going to do for you. I think we learn from the psalmist how we ought to respond to God when God brings you to the other side up through. How should you respond to a God who brings you to the other side of trials that could have wiped you out? I'm glad you asked. Here it is. When God brings you to the other side of through, you should worship God. Notice what he says in the A part of verse 13. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. Notice when God brought Israel through that trouble, the first thing the psalmist says he was going to do was go to the house of God and worship him. Are you with me? And the first expression of worship that he promises to give to the Lord is an offering. I will go to your house with burnt offerings. The psalmist teaches us a valuable lesson that when God brings you to the other side of problems and pain that could have meant your demise. You ought to go to his house and you ought to give God an offering. An offering of your worship, an offering of your praise, an offering of sacrifice, and yes, even a tangible offering of your financial resources. Or am I with you today? Are you with me today? But what kind of offering ought we give God? When God brings us to the other side of that which could have wiped us out. I'm glad you asked. It's in the text. First of all, you ought to give God a thankful offering. Let church say a thankful offering. Verse 13, I will go into your house with burnt offerings. The crisis is over and so now he comes to pay his vows, to pay his promises uh, through the offering of an appropriate sacrifice of burnt offerings. Burnt offerings in the Old Testament were meant to be expressions of thanksgiving. Burnt offerings. In the Old Testament worship, they would, go, they would get an animal like a goat or a lamb or a, a dove or a pigeon or whatever they could afford, a sheep if you will. They would bring that animal to the altar and they would slay the animal and lay the carcass of the animal on the altar and set the altar on fire. And as the carcass was burning, the smoke ascended to the nostrils of God as a sweet 
aroma of worship. He declares, I'm going to give you the whole offering, my burnt offering. Not, I'm not going to hold back part of the animal. I'm not going to give you a shoulder and a leg, if you will. No, I'm going to give you, I'm going to put the whole animal on the altar. Why? Because as I look back through my life, at, at our lives, and realize that we could have been destroyed, we could have been wiped out. God, I can't hold back my worship because my worship is an expression of how thankful. I am so I've got to give you all of this can I talk to somebody today that when you come to the house of God you ought to come with your mind made up that you're going to give God your whole offering you're not going to hold anything back because as you look back through the rear view mirror of your life you realize that stuff should have wiped you out stuff should have destroyed you but God didn't let it happen so you got to give him an offering that expresses how thankful you are that's why even when you give in the offering plate, don't just reach in your purse and your pocket and just get anything out. No, reflect on what God has done for you and give him a whole offering, a thankful offering. But wait, not only should you give the Lord a thankful offering, but you ought to give God your best offering. Let church say your best offering. He says, verse 15, I will offer you burnt sacrifices Watch this. Of fat animals. Fat animals refers to the health and quality of the animal. In other words, he's getting ready to go to the house of God. He said, but I can't go to the house of God without first getting an offering. Their offering was not so much money as it was getting a sheep, a lamb, a goat, if you will, a pigeon, if you were poor, <laughs> And he would go out and look in his flock and say, I'm, I, I can't give God just any kind of offering. He sees a, a, a lamb over there. He says, no, that's a skinny, that's a skinny lamb. He looks like he's sickly. I can't give my God no sickly, skinny offering. He looks over there and says, I see another lamb, another goat. But, but one of his eyes has been put out. He says, no, 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 no. I can't give my God no one-eyed offering. Because my offering is an expression of what I think about the worth of God in my life. I said, I can't give that, that one because that one is sick. I can't give that one because that one got a broke leg. I can't give my God no broke leg offering. But he looks until he finds the plumpest, fattest, healthiest animal that he can find. He says, that's the one, that's the one, that's the one. I got to give my God because it represents the best that I have. Come and let me tell you something. Whenever God brings you to the other side of stuff that could have wiped you out, you ought to give God your best offering of worship. Hey, am I, are you with me here today? Don't you hold back on God. God's been too good to you for you not to give God your best. Why aren't you giving your best? Because God gave us his best when he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross. And a God that would give his son to die for my sinful self. I can't help but give him my best. But wait, wait. You ought to give God, lastly, a generous offering. Look at that 15th verse. Tell somebody he's still in the text. He, he says he's going to bring God. He's going to bring, listen, fat animals, plural. Rams, plural. Bulls, plural. Goats, plural. This man was obviously a wealthy man because in antiquity, only wealthy folk could afford to give that many animals in a sacrifice. Or he may have been a king like King Hezekiah who saw God deliver Jerusalem from Sennacherib. Well, he gives God a generous offering because he realizes that as generous as he's being to God, God had been even more generous to him, to he and his nation when he delivered them from certain death. Can I tell you today, you may not be a wealthy person as this man obviously was. You may not be a king or potentate 
as this man probably was. But you can still be generous in what you give to God. Because when you come to worship God with your, with your praise, with your worship, with your finances, when you come to give God your time and your service, you ought to be generous. Give God a generous offering because you realize and you look back through the rearview mirror that I face some stuff. I'm really not supposed to even be alive. You've had bullets to go by your head with your name written on it. People counted you out, but God counted you back in. And when you realize I went through some stuff, I'm really not supposed to be in here today, but the Lord spared me. That means you ought to be generous when you worship God. Are you with me today? So when God brings you to the other side of through, you should worship God. But secondly, when God brings you to the other side of through, you should keep your word with God. Look at somebody and say, keep your word. He says in verse 13 and 14, be part of verse 13, I will pay you my vows, my, my vows, my promises. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make good on what I promise you, which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken. When did I make this promise? When I was in trouble. <laughs> the psalmist remembers a prayer that he had prayed to God in their time of trouble. And in the prayer, it's obvious that he struck a bargain with God. Here's how I think the prayer might have sounded. Now, Lord, if you get us out of this, now I can't speak for nobody else, but if you get us out of this, I promise you, the first thing I'm going to do is go to your house and I'm going to offer you a sacrifice of praise. Have you ever prayed like that? Lord, if you get me out of this. <laughs> you, you ever heard the expression foxhole religion? Foxhole religion. It's a term born on the battlefield. It's when bullets are whistling by, bombs are exploding, body parts are strewn all over the place. They would dig ditches, a trench called a foxhole. And they would get in the foxhole to get beneath the line of fire as bullets are whistling it. Bombs are exploding and body parts are everywhere. It's interesting, a soldier who, who doesn't go to nobody's church he all of a sudden gets religious in a foxhole. Somebody says there's no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole. So when bullets are whistling by, bombs are exploding, body parts are strewn all over the place, he begins to pray like this, Lord, if you let me make it back home, if you let me survive this, I promise you, that when I get back home, I'm going to give my life to you. I'm going to get in the church and I'm going to live for you. God let him get, get through. God let him survive. God let him get back home. And he forgets about all the promises that he had made to God. But the writer of Psalm 66 does not practice a foxhole religion. No, he has every intention to keep his word, to keep his vow. That's my word to you today. You've been through stuff that you shouldn't have survived. You've been through stuff that should have wiped you out. You've been through enough that should have caused you to lose your mind. And you told God, you told God that if God would deliver you, you were going to live for him. Here's what I want to tell you. Keep your word. You told God if he brought you out of that situation, you were going to live for him. Keep your word. You told God that if he blessed you to get that job, you were going to start giving your tithe. Keep your word. You told God that if he healed your body, you were going to go to church every Sunday. Keep your word. You told God that if he got you out of trouble this time you were going to ask him to come in your life as your savior and as your lord keep your word you told God that if he spared your life you were going to live for him for the rest of your life keep your word keep your word keep your word when God brings you to the other side of through you should worship God you should keep your word with God 
But then lastly, when God brings you to the other side of stuff that should have wiped you out, you should be a witness for God. So he says in verse 16, come, come in here, all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul in light of the fact that God had brought his nation out of trouble uh, and that God had heard his prayer, he offers to give his personal testimony. He says, I'm going to be a one-man witness for the Lord because I realize that what we went through, we shouldn't have survived it, but we did make it. So I've got, if you will, to be a witness for the Lord. Matter of fact, this is the second time in this psalm that we see a, t a, a testimony coming from the psalmist. In verses 5 through 7, he gives a corporate testimony speaking on behalf of the nation in verse 5 he says come and see the works of God then he gives a cliff note abridgment of the history of Israel of God's deliverance how he brought us through the Red Sea and how he brought us across the Jordan River. But he ends the psalm not with a corporate testimony, but he ends the psalm with a personal testimony. He says, when he said, come and see the works of God in verse 5, that was corporate. But in verse 16, when he says, come and hear, and I will declare what he has done for my soul, that was personal. It's all right, child of God, for us to testify corporately. It's all right every now and then to tell the people what God has done for us. It's all right to tell the people how God brought your family through trouble. It's all right to testify second baptism about how God brought us through a turbulent year. But every now and then, you ought to give your personal testimony. Every now and then, you ought to be able to say, but let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Let me tell you how he opened doors for me. Let me tell you how he made a way for me. People said it was over, but God brought me through. People have counted me out, but God counted me back in. I don't know about you, but we serve a God who specializes in bringing us through. Because our God has a through, will give you a through testimony. Can I get a witness? Joshua is, is in the, the Jordan River. But as soon as the feet of the priest touch the Jordan, the waters banked up and they went across on dry ground. Our faith is full of true testimony. Moses is at the Red Sea, but when he stretched out his rod, they went across on dry ground. Our faith is full of true testimony. The Hebrew boys were in a fiery furnace, but the Lord cooled the flames and they wouldn't burn. Our faith is full of true testimonies. There is Paul and Silas in a Roman jail, but at midnight, God sent an angel who rocked the prison and set them free. Our faith is full of true testimony. Isaiah said, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you won't be burned. Our faith is full of true testimony. Through testimony, yea, though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, can I get a witness? But wait a minute, I've got a through testimony.
testimony. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I've already come. It was grace that brought me, saved us far, and grace will lead me on. Do you have a through testimony? Do you have a through testimony? You've been through the storm. brings you through you ought to be a witness for God at this moment I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this message today I don't know how it is spoken to you at what level it is spoken to you but somebody came into this room today and this message had your thumbprint on it your DNA on it. That is no accident, no coincidence that you are here today, but you're here by the divine providence of God. That God so navigated the circumstances of your life that he brought you here today to hear this simple word. Amen. So I encourage you today to respond to a God who has brought you to the other side of through. Maybe you have not accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord. This is a good day to keep your word with God. Maybe you are a Christian. You love the Lord. Maybe you looking for a church home and you sense God wants you to be a part of this ministry today. We invite you, come on. Trust the Lord today. Trust the Lord. Is the Lord speaking to you? Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. Is the Lord speaking to you today? Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust Him today. 
trust him today it is no accident that you are here trust the Lord today trust the Lord today trust him today brother keep your word keep your word with God you could have been dead sleeping in your grave but God brought you out God brought you through keep your word with God in the balcony the Lord's waiting on you the Lord's waiting on you it is as if you are the only person in this room today and the Lord's speaking directly to you trust God today trust God today Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Trust him today. Come on. Encourage them as they come. Encourage them as they come. There's a husband and wife the Lord is speaking to today. There's a single person the Lord is speaking to today. Right now. Trust him today. to help me to preach this sermon today I want you to deputize yourself as a personal evangelist at your seat and I simply want you to ask your neighbor on the left side or right side though maybe in front of you or behind you excuse me ma'am or sir but is the Lord speaking to you today if so let me walk down there with you I can't walk for you, but I will walk with you. You don't have to go down there by yourself. Just ask him. Just ask him. Just ask him. Just be obedient and ask him. Is God talking to you? Can I walk with you? Can I walk with you today? Can I walk with you today? Oh, bless you. Encourage him. Can I walk with you today? I can't walk for you, but I know a lot of people are in here today, and you may be a little embarrassed wondering, worried about what these people will think about you. Listen, don't you worry about what people think about you because none of these people have a heaven or hell to put you in. You come just like you are with all of your habits, your hang, hang ups, all of your faults, flaws and failures and the Lord will save you and deliver you just like you are. Is that you today? Is that you today? Is that you today? Bless the Lord. Is that you today? Did that word speak to your heart today? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, hallelujah, trust him, trust him, come on, hallelujah. presence of the Lord today. Well, praise the Lord. We are so happy to have every one of you who have come today to become a part of the second church. Amen. We know you had a choice of churches that you could have all attended and chose to join. But we're so happy to have you. Nice to see that pretty looking woman right there joining our church. Good to have all, every one of you. Thank you so much. All right, if you would follow uh, Reverend Wilkins and, what's her name? Sister, Sister Weston, amen. If y'all would follow them, they're going to share with you information about how to become a part of this fellowship.
All right. All right, now. All right. You know, it said that a train only blows its whistle at a crossing. So now the day was a crossing. But it ain't going to be that way every Sunday. I want, I really want to teach you from the word of God. I want you to encourage somebody, tell somebody to come to church with you every Sunday. You know more people here than I do. Because I'm going to be teaching you how to find God's purpose for your life. How to be a person who lives in the purpose and in the destiny of God. Amen. Amen. All right, Rem London, what I'm supposed to be doing. McPastor, another hand praise. The other side of through. The other side of through. I tell you, we have such a humble. Humble, humble man of God. Okay. Pastor wants to be in the back to be able to shake hands. Amen. A humble spirit. That's our senior servant pastor, Dr. Maurice Watson. We're going to give him a chance to get out there and get situated before we get dismissed. If you will, let us pray. Father God, it's in Jesus' name we come to thank you for a great message. Thank you for bringing us through, Lord God, all the hardships and the pains. And you have delivered us, Father God, into prosperity. I ask your special blessings for our traveling grace, Lord God. Praying for our children and all of our families, Lord God, that you will forever keep us, oh Lord God. We love you, Father God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his very presence, the only wise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Amen. Now those with disabilities and the mothers of the church, may be dismissed now. Those with disabilities, those who are riding the van, and our mothers, you may be dismissed. We're going to give them a chance there. Just tell you, your neighbor, wasn't that a word? Amen. Certainly, I pray God's favor into your life.